Hello, it's Joe the CRM chap here and we're back with another video in my series all about Microsoft Exam PL400. This is the developer's exam for those who are looking to extend out or indeed develop on top of the Power Platform. So in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the second type of Power Apps. Last week we saw how you can work with model driven power apps um, for when you're developing data driven applications. In today's video we're going to show you what you can do with canvas apps instead and these are more for situations maybe where you don't need to connect directly into Microsoft Dataverse although in the example today we will be doing or for situations where maybe you need a, a very sort of highly task focused, task, task driven application that needs to work well both on mobile and tablet devices. So to get started first of all you can see we're in the maker portal we're going to go down to solutions down here and into our PL400 demo solution that we've been building out throughout the series and then at the top up here I'm just going to click on new app canvas app uh, and I'm going to select a uh, tablet form factor as the app that uh, we want today and what this is going to do now is going to open up the uh, power, power apps the canvas app studio and from there we'll be able to make a start in terms of building out our application. So we can see that straight away we get just effectively a blank app that we could, that um, we can um, sort of start building out from scratch, a single screen app uh, across a single page. Um, because we want to maybe, um, we don't want to spend too much time sort of building this app out, uh, we want to maybe use something that's already off the shelf. What we're going to do is we're going to click on file at the top, we're going to click on new, uh, and I'm going to create a new app that's based off the our data that we're working with. I'm going to select common data service up here. I'm going to click on create. It's going to find the connection into the environment that we're working with. All that I need to do is select contacts up here. Click on connect. Uh, click on don't save for the previous app. And what it's going to do now is going to build out a fully working app um, for us based off the data we've selected. And this app can basically be used straight away. As we can see, we get a browse, a details and edit screen on here. I can click on the debug button at the top up here and I can click on the new button and I can actually start creating a new contact. So I'm just going to put in, let's say, uh, john at uh, domain.com and click on the save button up there. Um, we can see that the app hasn't actually exposed out all the fields we want so what we can actually do here is uh, fix the issue here and we can see that it's telling us that we need to have the full name uh, sorry the last name field on here as a mandatory field so I'm going to click on my edit form um, I can see that on the right hand side I get a pane on here that lets me sort of define the various settings for this I can change things such as the color the border uh, and I can also most importantly given this is an edit form control add on additional fields. So let's go and add on the last name field now that uh, is missing on here. Click on the add button and we can see that it's popped on straight away and that error that we got through a second ago is actually showing up. So what we can do is actually just fix the issue now. I can just put in any value on here, click on the save button and that's now saved um, save that record back into Microsoft Dataverse. We can click on the edit button down here and I've got the ability of then going into, let's just say, modify this a little bit further. So maybe just put in a telephone number as an example. Once again, we can see that gets all saved. Uh, we can even delete the record as well. So let's do that as well. And we can see once more, that all works. So it's a fully working app. It gives us a really good basis for us to hopefully start booting out something a bit more uh, advanced and a bit more tailored for what we need. So let's spend some time now just familiarizing ourselves with some of the key uh, capabilities within the Studio Editor as we're building out our apps. We can see at the top up here we've got a sort of taskbar that gives us access to various different actions. We can add on new screens to our app based on common templates. We can adjust the theme. So maybe I want to go for maybe just a bit more of a dark mode themed theme for my particular app and we can see that gets updated straight away. We can insert new controls in there and we're going to see how that works in a few seconds. Um, we can connect up to additional data sources, bring in media, we can work with things such as collections and variables. Collections are basically sort of temporary tables that we can define in our app to hold our data. Variables can are specific bits of information that we can again reference across the app if we needed to. And we've also got access to sort of common steps that we can implement into our app as well. So if we want to maybe just do, you know, define a new collection, um, set an on visible or an on hidden um, sort of event handler, it will let us do that on there. 
I'm just going to change the theme back to blue for now. Now, as we click on um, um, the various sort of components in our WYSIWYG editor up here, we can see that the formula bar at the top sort of updates. So effectively, all controls in our Canvas apps have set of set of different sort of things on here that we can sort of tailor about with. So in the case of our contacts one up here, we can see we've got a text label up here that we can um, modify. Um, so maybe, you know, we don't want to call it contacts for our particular app. We just want to have it as, you know, people instead. I can edit that and then straight away we can see the changes are reflected in the app. So it gives you that real sort of uh, responsive design, uh, you know, uh, potentially a lot better compared to a model driven app in that respect because you can see how your changes take effect very quickly indeed. And we've got all sorts of different controls that we can sort of modify down there. Um, so one way we can do it is by sort of modifying going down the scroll down this stuff over here but as we see on the right hand side with the pane down here all of the properties are also exposed out here as well so if we wanted to we can modify them in this view as well but for now I'm just going to hide this over here as we click on controls we can see that various additional uh, properties become available so for example we can change the font type I can maybe make this a bold um, text instead. Uh, this So generally as you click on different controls you'll see different options become available to you at the top there so it's always worth just experimenting around and seeing what you can do. On the left hand side we can see the tree view for our app so this gives us a bit of a, a nice summary of all the various different screens and controls on our app so we can see at the moment we're in the browse screen again I can click on any of these specific controls and they'll be selected in the main sort of window down there. Um, in situations where maybe I'm working across multiple apps I want to have a common set of controls that always sort of get deployed out so maybe like a header or a footer bar or something like that uh, I can use the component library feature to basically just define a new component I can build that out as if it was sort of a new screen and then sort of get that added into my current app or also into other ones as well I'm just going to delete that for now additional options over here as well we can insert all the various different control types search through if you wanted to we can bring in additional tables from our data first environment or indeed from other data sources. We can use upload media controls so maybe we, have, maybe we can have images or videos in our app. Uh, and then finally down here we've got the ability of being able to do advanced monitoring of our app. So as people are using our applications we can actually see um, what's going on. We can detect when errors are happening. We can maybe start a shared session with them to figure out what's actually going wrong. And then we could also do open tests as well. We've also got up here as well the uh, the app checker as well. Um, so this is particularly important not only from a functionality standpoint, but also from an accessibility access, access, an accessibility uh, standpoint as well. As developers, we should always be aware and always be conscious that we are building applications that can be consumed by you know um, potential users of any type so therefore we need to make sure that we are addressing scenarios uh, where people may have low vision by providing the appropriate accessible labels for screen readers we must make sure that we're using um, you know a branding style that's good, not going to cause issues with people maybe with color blindness uh, there's a whole range of different things that we as app developers need to do to make sure our apps are um, are broadly accessible you know um, so the app checker gives us a really great mechanism for being able to sort of, um, you know, identify areas where we could improve on that, and then we can take the appropriate steps to fix that. That's part of what we do. Now, one of the most powerful aspects of the Canvas app experience is the forming language that you get with this particular um, with a particular tool. So, effectively, what this lets us do is we can define a whole range of different formulas that can perform different actions based on. Uh, based on what we need. So let's just work through just a basic example now and see how we can use the formula um, language to sort of achieve a specific sort of scenario. In this case, I want to maybe just add at the bottom just a little sort of message down there that sort of says uh, hello to the current user and we bring in the current user's name as part of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on insert at the top up here. I'm going to click on label. It's going to add me a new label control down here. I'm just going to drag it down to the bottom of the screen and adjust it like so. I'm going to get rid of the default text value that's supplied by de by um, by default when the control is created, and I'm going to replace this with a defined function. So what I can actually call is a function called user, like so, and this contains all sorts of different details about the current user who, who is logged in. So what I can do is actually then just get the full name of the current user, and as I type that in, we can see that Joe Griffin, my current name, appears at the bottom down there, and there's other properties that we can access as well, such as email and things like that, depending on what we need to do. 
Um, so this returns my full name, which is great. Uh, but what I want to do is just extend this out just further. But to do this, I'm going to need to do concatenate two different text strings together. And I can use the concatenate function to help achieve that. So it just you can have you just define various different strings separated by commas, and all of those will be joined together as one word. So I'm just going to type in hello with a space, comma after that, add a closing bracket at the end, and we can see that should then render down there at the bottom and work successfully. And then all I need to do is just drag that into the corner there, maybe just make the text just a little bit smaller by going up here. Uh, and we can see straight away in terms of what we can start to do uh, with our formula language here in the Canvas apps. So it's beyond the scope of the video today to really sort of dive in and look at all the various capabilities that you've got with this formula language. It really is sort of, um, I would really sort of recommend that you go away and review, um, review all of that at your own leisure um, and familiarise yourself with the most common ones that are available. So we're going to decide now that our app is ready to go. So I want to just click on to save down here. I'm just going to call this my PL400 app. I'm going to save that into our environment now. And then all we need to do now is just get this app shared out to the users who are using it. And all we need to do here is just click on share over here. It's going to take us out into the, uh, into the maker portal. And all we need to do is just search for the individual at the top up there. Um, and then we just need to make sure that they've got the appropriate privileges for the app. So we can either set them as user or co-owners. If we're connected to the uh, a Microsoft Dataverse data source, then we'll also be given an option of defining a security role for them as well. Uh, and then that's it. Share that out and then the app is accessible and people can start working with that in your particular environment. So that pretty much wraps it up for today's video. So I hope we've been able to give a flavor here of the type of capabilities that are available as part of Canvas apps. They're an incredibly versatile tool for when you need to build out those highly task-driven applications that are focused on particular um, usage cases that need to connect to different data sources uh, and most crucially as well, need to be accessed as part of a, uh, a mobile-based scenario as well. All of those and more are potentially really good scenarios for a Canvas Power App. So what it leads me to say is thank you um, again, for, thank you for watching. Um, please check out the other videos in the series if you haven't done already. We're covering a whole range of different topics across across this PL400 exam. Uh, so I hope this and others are useful as part of your revision. Um, please like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, we try and produce, produce content fairly regularly. Um, and, all, and so what it leads me to say is thanks again and have a great day. Cheers. Cheers.